So episode three of the Halo TV show has gone live and, well, I feel really mixed about it. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to be very upset with this episode. But why is that? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going, Halo fans? Kevin here once again, giving our discussion about the Halo TV show. We just had a new episode release, guys. I'm going to give you my initial spoiler-free reviews. And in the second half of this video, we're going to be covering spoiler topics as well. I have a marked in the timestamps down below, guys. So you can, if you want to avoid spoilers, you can. But if you want to catch the initial impressions of it with no spoilers, well, feel free to stick around. So this episode, again, is a much more dialogue drama focused episode. There really isn't much in the way of action, very similar to what it was with the second episode. So if you're expecting like Spartans going out, kicking ass, Master Chief punching aliens in the face, not exactly happening. So personally, I did enjoy episode two quite a bit. I think it did a great job of setting up some extra plot points and really kind of set up the path moving forward when it comes to the show. And I feel like episode three kind of just kind of continues on what they set up with episode two. Some more world building, some more character plot points getting fleshed out and things like that. Though there are some questionable shots within this episode, it just made me cringe pretty hard when watching. Though both cringe shots aren't exactly really that relevant to the story and what's happening. It just feels so unnecessarily thrown in. I was just like, uh, don't do that. But for the story elements that are told within this episode are well done. Though there are some ways they go about kind of doing, setting up some plot points and some parts that they change throughout the Halo lore. It just makes me kind of go like, mm, I just kind of wish they didn't do it that way. Not that I'm looking for an exact telling of the Halo games or the books or anything like that. Like so far, I've been totally fine with all the changes and stuff like that that they've done with the show. I think just this episode felt a bit more like sci-fi channel kind of stuff rather than like Halo. Yeah, a lot of the promotional material, right? Like from Kiki Wolfkin, a lot of the actors saying they're trying to figure out who Chief is as a person. Well, they definitely did a lot of that in this episode for sure. Though it would pain me to say that this is probably the weakest episode that we've had so far. Of course, we've only had three where the first one I thought was great. Second one was good, not as great as the first episode. If people were calling episode two a low point or the filler episode, which it definitely wasn't. This one definitely feels a bit more filler, but it certainly does progress the story forward when it comes to Master Chief and his plot points and his story arc. Or this episode really does focus on the Master Chief and moving forward when it comes to this show, which we'll talk more details later in this episode once we get into the spoiler discussion. But yeah, this episode, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see some people not too happy about it on Twitter and making some pretty bad videos about it, uh, just because it definitely didn't feel super Halo-like. But there was a really big reveal that happened in this episode, and also a really important character that came involved with it as well, which I think about now we can probably get into the spoiler discussions of things. So for the spoiler section, I think I'll just kind of go through the episode and kind of give you my thoughts and review of this episode. I'll keep it nice and brief for you guys. So it opens up on the planet Oban, which is actually part of Halo lore. And, and actually the map uh, Daybreak from Halo 4 is actually take place on that planet as well. So it's a nice little touch of the lore right there. And uh, basically you run into a young version of McKee and I guess like his or like young crush as a kid back in the day. I don't know. Um, reading that same book that she was reading in the first episode, Dawn of Angels, which we found out that that book talks about a girl who's orphan who ends up hating the world. That's kind of the idea of that story. And so uh, they prog progress forward the reading and the most awkward dialogue happens and the most awkward like young child kind of kiss thing happens with a really close camera. I don't know. I cringed so hard when I saw I'm like, why do you have to do this? Why does this need to happen? Like he's like a little love interest or crush or whatever dies because like these evil policemen are like torturing children basically and like they zap him to death essentially. And I was just like, I mean, I know like people can be pretty mean to other humans, but I feel like that's extra mean. That doesn't, well, I wouldn't expect to see something like that happen. Um, but the, this also kind of sets up why McKee is with the Covenant. And it's because the Covenant were seeking her out. Uh, they came with like some big pokey rod. They put the pokey rod in front of McKee and they go, that's her, let's grab her. And so they take her up on the spaceship essentially. Interesting to see that they have like a blessed one stick to let you know that they're a blessed one, I guess. Uh, I guess it's also revealed later on that dialogue within a you know, few minutes later that the Covenant do know that Chief is also a blessed one. How they know that 
I have no idea. Then there's an interesting dialogue between the Flash clone and Halsey, which is kind of more like a inner monologue kind of discussion played out on screen. And it's just kind of interesting that the Flash clone has so much knowledge. I guess maybe just Flash clones can instantly just import all the knowledge that the original user has or something. I don't know the, I don't know the space lore behind that. Uh, but it's kind of an interesting discussion where you kind of understand that Halsey really is there to kind of just do whatever it takes to kind of move per human humanity forward if that's the way she kind of views it. And like I was going like, man, I really don't want to see you like take out this clone. Like I feel bad. And yeah, they, they, they kill the clone and they take the brain and, and they make Cortana out of her. And I was just like, man, I feel really bad doing this, which I guess is kind of like the idea that they wanted to achieve. They wanted to have you some kind of form of initial attachment with the Flash clone. So then you feel bad and kind of understand why it's such a negative thing within the UNSC. But then like another incredibly cringy moment happens where like the lab assistant, who's just like a guy, he's just normal, whatever. And then like, all of a sudden like says like really like kind of complimentary things to the flash clone and like tries to kiss her while she's like incapacitated super cringe like the creepy lab assistant who's like you know has a crush on like their you know boss and stuff like that like i'm like god oh god like it's just that was painful to watch and it's such a stereotype trope too and like this guy like he just he's there's no reason for it like why do that why I mean, unless it's gonna play out later on where like he confesses his love to Halsey and he, she probably goes like, shut up, idiot. I don't know. It's that either that's like a Chekhov's gun kind of thing where like you don't set something up like that to end up not fulfilling out later on in the season. So that gets me some concerns as well because I'm super cringe. And a big change here is that the great Cortana, which is, you know, from a brain clone, which is like, Part of the lore and stuff like that but this time they actually implant cortana into chief's brain it's not like a chip that goes into like his armor suit to kind of like enhance things like she's like in his head can actually can control master chief which is kind of what they touched on previously in episode one and two that basically need to find a way to kind of control chief to make sure he doesn't go a wall like he did earlier in the season which felt like super invasive and kind of like ruins that whole thing that we have within the games where like it's like chief and cortana dynamic duo let's go get him kind of thing we're in the show it's a lot more apprehension especially from chief going like you just put this in my brain and like i'm supposed to be okay with this kind of thing but as long as it gets me on the battlefield i guess so and great thing is that cortana is voiced by jen taylor who does the voice acting for cortana in the game so that's super cool to see we did cover it earlier on this channel like a couple years ago when they actually had to make that change because of a scheduling conflict originally it was supposed to be the actress who plays halsey was supposed to do the voice acting for cortana as well interesting thing is that the way they represent Cortana within the show. She definitely does come off more digital like than what we saw in the trailers for sure. But they kind of make her more life-size and kind of like one with the people kind of thing rather than being like a little AI character that kind of pops up on your hand or comes up on your dashboard kind of thing. It makes you try to more of a humanized version of Cortana. Which I kind of prefer like her being like, you know, on a desk in your hand kind of thing. It makes it feel more like a like an AI character where I think in this one they try to make her feel more like a human, but also AI kind of thing. Then we cut to McKee, who's on her search to get the Keystone back. Her first step is to find a UNSC frigate to try to see if there's any information on there. He six the Legolo worms on, on the frigate like we saw in the trailer as well. I kind of wish we saw the hunters. It starts out showing the hunters and then just shows the worms. And I was like, eh, I would rather see the hunters, but I can understand being put in a drop pod, which looks just like the drop pods from CE, which was a pretty cool touch right there. Uh, they the kind of hide them within that, so it does make sense. But McKee doesn't find anything. She reports back to the Covenant Corvette, and then the UNSC actually pick up those transmissions, but she kind of scrambles them up in a way. But I think they're going to get figured out later on in the season, where Miranda is left with the ability to decode the message here. And I'm pretty sure Miranda is going to like find out that, like, oh my god, this is a human speaking saying Healy rather than an actual saying Healy. So I have a feeling that reveal is probably going to happen with Miranda, give her her more purpose within the show be like hey i found out there's a human working with the company what the heck's going on in this whole episode chief is having like a real like existential crisis to the whole thing kind of like soren kind of like planted all the seeds in his ear you know back in episode two saying hey remove the chip and stuff like that you start feeling again kind of thing and he actually does he removes the inhibitor chip to kind of feel again because he, the only time he's been able to feel anything is when he's 
touching the artifact and reliving those memories and so he wants to kind of feel that feeling again and so he actually removes the chip Cortana does warn Halsey that he is trying to remove the chip and Halsey plays it as saying Cortana should help out Chief to gain his trust because that's more important. I like that kind of play where you have alternative motives when it comes to your actions, but they're trying to get people like on your side kind of thing. Again, like, but it just feels like you're just trying to trick Chief into you know, following along with Halsey, following along with Cortana, where they feel pretty like evil. And like Chief is like, hey man, I'm just trying to be a human, you know? And once Chief removes the chip, he kind of walks around Reach and kind of like feels like he's experiencing life for like the first time, listening to music, you know, listening to dialogues of people talking, uh, seeing people like in like relationships and things like that. And just kind of, everything's just kind of hitting them way different than previously because he's not so muted being freed from his inhibitor chip he runs back to the artifact and just goes like am i just i need more information and kind of gets the information that sounds like there's a second piece to the artifact where you put the two together you'll find the location of the halo ring chief having a feeling that that has a tie to his childhood that whatever they were digging around their house means you find that location you'll probably be able to find the halo ring to stop the covenant from wiping out everybody there was one part though where i felt like Cortana was genuinely trying to help out Chief, which I think was kind of like that first step in Chief kind of trusting Cortana. I hope they go with that dynamic. It seems like right now it's very adversarial between Cortana and Chief, uh, or I'd much rather see more kind of like camaraderie a little bit there. There'd be like one, two punch, like we we're talking about earlier. And uh, that's actually a part where Chief was actually trying to look into the information, like what planets could possibly his memories are coming from in there. And then Cortana actually helps him narrow down those numbers. Then combining the information Cortana gave him along with his memories, he was able to find out that it was on his home planet of Eridinus 2, again, unlocking more childhood memories, which Halsey definitely doesn't want to have happen within this TV show. And so they find out that, hey, if we go to my home planet, to my old home, we should be able to find the artifact to stop that ring, which is super important. Halsey then insists that she comes with him. And then a very interesting bit of dialogue happens later in the episode where the creepy ass assistant says, well, if Master Chief gets more of his memories back, this could bring down the whole house as he states it. And Halsey replies back, that's what we have Cortana for. And I was like, man, that seems just super sketch. I was like, man, I would really like to see just like Cortana and Chief kicking ass across the galaxy. Uh, but maybe it will find a way later on in the season i don't know i hope so because i would hate to have something so adversarial that which is kind of what cortana is kind of set up to be right now inside chief's head and having so much control over him like Ch cortana can literally shut down chief from like his like his brain he can shut off his brain if you want which feels so much more invasive and less likely of trust where it came before if you just put in a little chip into your helmet at any moment you can just put, click it out kind of thing you know Interesting thing throughout this entire episode, it seems like Kai specifically has some kind of extra interest in Chief. I don't know if it's romantically or if it's anything more just like a personal thing because they grew up as children training together. You know, they have some, you know, very strong bond with each other, like a lot of trust going on. And seeing Chief kind of going a little AWOL, she could either be really concerned or maybe there's something going on with that. We'll probably see something like a confrontation happen later on in the season as well between Kai and Master Chief. Then with the whole side story between Quan and Soren, where Quan wants to head back to Madrigal, Soren's like, hell no, it's super dangerous. I'm trying to keep you safe. Quan goes, well, hey, I'm kind of rich. And if you take me back to Madrigal to go see uh, Fincher, then you know, possibly I can pay you back with some really cool like uh, elements and stuff like that or a big payout. Soren goes, okay, fine. I like a lot of money. And then it looks like they're heading back to Madrigal. So it looks like episode four will be going back to the plan, which we've already seen in the trailers already. I just really hope something cool happens within episode four. We need something to kind of spice it up a little bit because you know, the, the action scene with the Logolo Worms and McKee on that frigate was pretty cool, very well done. So it was just, yeah, I was kind of, I just want to see, I want to see the, the Spartans and I want to see Master Chief and, you know, kicking alien butts across the galaxy, man. But yeah, that marks one third of the way through the first season of the Halo TV show. And this one was the, it was, I don't know, I, like I'm so confused of how to feel about this episode. And a lot of new things were brought up within this episode again. So I just kind of want to wait and see how the whole thing plays out before I get my final decision on it. First impressions though, I was like, I kind of wish you did a little different. But if you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Got a link to all my Halo news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.